Hello, hello, hello. Hello and welcome to Daughters Talk on Elevation TV Network. We are excited about tonight. Listen, this conversation on tonight, I am truly ready for what God is going to do. And I just would like to give a special welcome to our first time visitors. If this is your first time being with us on Daughters Talk here on Elevation TV Network, we would like to say welcome. And thank you for choosing Daughters Talk. You could have chose any other live broadcast, but you chose ours. And we want to say thank you for that. Thank you to all of you who are returning back. Hello and welcome. How are you doing? Thank you for tuning in on tonight. Let's get ready for this conversation. I mean, God has just been truly blowing my mind through everything that I have been enduring, that I have been growing. I said, not going through, growing through, through everything. God has been truly blowing my mind. So I am excited about the conversation on tonight. I have a special pop-up guest on tonight. And um, as I was just kind of talking a little bit about uh, some of the things that God was dealing with me about, it was just like, oh my gosh, yes, come on in. You're going to come on in on this conversation. So I have a special guest that we're going to bring into the bro uh, the broadcast on today into the studio. And uh, I would like for you to help me welcome them. But first of all, I just want to welcome you and thank you all for just coming in. And um, we're not going to be too long. We're going to go ahead and get started. And then I'm going to uh, bring up my guests. So I'm going to, while the guest is coming in here, we're going to just go ahead and pull down the banner, but hello and welcome. Come on. I need you to tell all of your family, your friends about um, Daughters Talk being on, on tonight. We come on every Friday at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time here on Elevation TV Network. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. So listen, call up your friends, call up your family. Tell them we're on and come on in and let's have this conversation on tonight. Oh, yes. Come on, share the good news with somebody else. Amen. Amen. All right. So blessings, everyone. Welcome. Hey, <laughs> this is my pop-up guest. <laughs> he is in the broadcast. Welcome, Naaman. Hey, thank you, thank, you. <laughs> thank you for joining us on today. Thank Glad you. Glad to so be a part of yeah. this opportunity to share such good news such good news amen amen so i am ready for this conversation <laughs> so are you ready listen if you're ready just let us know hey i'm ready i'm ready i know that you've already called your family i know that you've already called your friends i know you've already called those and said hey listen daughter's talk is on tonight on elevation tv network come on in watch it and um let's just engage on tonight all right so Name it. Would you like to just tell the people just a little bit about yourself? We're going to do it a little different tonight. So if you could just tell the, <laughs> yes. So if you could just tell the people just a little bit, give them a little bit about yourself for those who may not know you. I'm her husband. <laughs> yes, he is. I get to wake up to this every day. Oh, listen, y'all, we ain't going to shift the conversation. <laughs> No, but uh, my name is Damon Haig. I have recently become an author for the first time earlier this year. Uh, been a minister for, Lord Jesus, the past 24 <laughs> years. And, Where, and still a work in progress myself. But thank God for just continued revelation, continued access to him and the spirit of God. And just... A desire to want to live before him. So with that, I try to spread the good news, spread the gospel, spread the love, spread the word, spread him as often and as frequently as possible. 
Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. And here a little bit later, um, Naaman said that he has wrote his first book, his first children's book. And so we'll just have him share a little bit about that before we um, end the broadcast on today. So um, we would love to hear more about your book. All right. So thank you so much for coming on on today. <laughs> thank you for having me. You are so welcome. It's truly an honor. Um, so do you want Let's just jump, Let's just jump on in. Let's jump into it. <laughs> yes. So tonight we're focusing on the importance, yes. literally the importance, in operating under the leading of the voice of God, hearing and acknowledging the voice of God. And there's one person when it comes to faith, obviously Abraham being Abram, Abraham being the godfather of faith. This man, when we really get into it and we'll tackle him tonight, he was truly on faith on a whole nother level, which makes it obvious as to why God's like, because of how your faith was, that's how I build a nation in your footsteps. Yes, come on, come on. So let's just jump over right to Genesis 1. We're not going to dilly-dally. We're not going to play. We're going to jump right into it. Yes. So Genesis 12, verse 1, and we'll go from 1 through 4. Just real quick, going to stay in the King James for this. Now the Lord had said unto Abram, get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee Two, And I will make of thee a great nation and I will bless thee and make thy name great and thou shalt be a blessing. Three, and I will bless them that bless thee and I will curse them that curse thee. And in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Four, so Abram departed as the Lord had spoken unto him, and Lot went with him. And Abram was 70 and five years old when he departed out of Haran. My God. And so right here, taking God's word. Mm -hmm. Abram, Abram, excuse me, later to become Abraham, but Abram just got up and left. Verse four, he didn't question God. He didn't reason with God. He didn't try and take, in, take advantage of God. God said, go, he left. He didn't try and disqualify what God was saying. And what makes it even more powerful when we truly look at it, there was no written law for him to base what he was hearing on to say, okay, this is God speaking to me. This is God dealing with me. Let me go. Yes. Yeah. No, he just heard and he went. He heard and he did. He heard and that's all that he needed. Verse four, so Abram departed as the Lord had spoken unto him. And there's another uh, version, I believe is the... Uh, the RSV Revised Standard Version that says he took all his belong belongings mm. and Sarah, oh, actually verse five, and Abraham took Sarai, his wife, and Lot, his brother's son, and all their substance, all their belongings that they had gathered yes. and the souls that they had gotten. So those that they had purchased who were working in their household, so their servants, gotten in Haran. And they went forth to go into the land of Canaan and into the land of Canaan, they came. So he just heard from God, took all their stuff and went. My God. We have to understand that when we operate in the timing and in the light of God, or basically taking him and his word as truth and going forward, guess what? Three things, God, three areas and three ways that God operates. He operates in power, mm -hmm. provision, 
and purpose. Verses two and three, he gave the purpose because he was going to bless Abraham, bless Abram. He was going to make his name great. And from him, there was going to come out a nation. There's the purpose. The power and the provision went, came as he went. See, God is not telling you, I want you to take all that you have and you're going to build and you're going to make something. God's saying, do what I tell you to do. And as you move, as you obey me, here comes the provision. It's almost like once you get started, provision will start coming. Because if you stand still and wait on the provision, you will never get to where you're supposed to go. And power, he also explained it in verse three. And I will bless them that bless thee and curse them that curse thee. And in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. So that's, that's power. That as I as you go in my name, I'm standing with you. As you go in my name, I'm opening up doors. I'm seeking to make sure that you have just what you need so that you can continue and you can reach the place and the plateau that I have for you. The establishment of operating through God's purpose, power and provision. So we want to make sure that we find ourselves marked in obedience, in agreement with God. So here's a man who before this didn't even have a relationship with God, but yet still recognize, hey, that's the voice of God. I need to listen. Yes. And that is the voice of God. So let me not hold on to my way, my way of thinking, my way of doing things. And let me allow him to speak. And as he's speaking, I'm going to do just what he says. And because I'm doing just what he says, he's got everything that's concerning me. Yes. He's handling everything that could get in the way, everything that everything that I'm needing, mm -hmm. he's going to provide. Why? Because he told me to do this. Not by might, mm -hmm. not by power, but by my spirit. When I operate under the leading and the unction of God, I'm operating under the spirit of God, which means that he has to take care of me. Mm -hmm. He has to provide for me. Yes. He has to open doors for me because this is him saying, he said, do this and I've done it. Mm -hmm. And that's when things, doors begin to open up. That's when opportunities start to avail themselves. Mm -hmm. That's when you'll start to see things line up because it's God in operation. I know for us, a lot of the things we do, if not for God saying do it, it would not have been done. Because in ourselves, it's like mm, not, not going that way, not taking that route, not going to do those things, not going to address that matter or that issue. But what do we understand and what do we know? That through Christ, all things are possible. All things are plausible. All things are capable. So, Sheeta, is there anything you want to interject right now at this point? You know, uh, um, I know that the Lord has really been, I had put on there like at first um, when I was just kind of sitting here, just meditating. I was just, uh, the title or whatnot that I, had believed that God was giving me was, um, you know, just giving our God our yes. And we've heard that before. Yes. But not taking it back, you know, and when I say not taking it back, like 
no matter what comes, no matter what happens, even like he was talking about in Genesis about Abram. And like when God began to speak to him and began to just, you know, just to tell him to do like when he told him to leave, when he told him to get up and go, all these different things and how like um, Abram could at, at any point, you know, he he gave God his yes because why he got up and he went, he obeyed. That was his yes. He obeyed whatever God told him to do. And sometimes when we in our yes, when we, we get up, we go, we obey. But then in our yes, when when things come, you know, as we're obeying God, as we're going through the journey, like Abraham he, in his go, in his yes, you know, when things happen, sometimes we take our yes back. We may not necessarily say, okay, God, I'm taking my yes back, but our actions, our behavior, our words that come out of our mouth is saying, I'm taking my yes back. Like God, like you didn't tell me when I said yes, you didn't tell me all of this. But the thing is, that's the faith is God not having to tell us everything that's the journey that's coming through the process. Because Abram, he journeyed in his yes. He journeyed. He That was his process. Listen, oh my gosh. I, I, don't want, I know you got something. I want, I want to make sure we cool. flow together. But cool. in that... <laughs> He did not take his yes back. He continued to obey God. Even when, when um, God had told him, you know, with Isaac, and we know about that, like talking about sacrificing, he didn't think nothing of it. He was like, look, come on, let's go. We about to go up here. I'm paraphrasing y'all. Y'all know I'm paraphrasing. But I'll let, I let Naomi do all the scriptures. Listen, <laughs> but he was like, come on. But the thing, listen to what he said. We're going to get the scripture, but listen to what, what listen to what he said when they were asking him basically like what are you doing what are you about where are you going like i see you in in the lad you and your son and where's the second i mean what, what is going on here but listen to what he said oh my god you got it listen to what he said all right go ahead so genesis 22 genesis 22 and it came to pass after these things that god did tempt abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here am I. Mm. And he said, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. And Abraham rose up early in the morning, saddled his donkey, and took two of his young men with him, and Isaac his son, and clave the wood for the burnt offering, and rose up and went unto the place of which God had told him. Mm. Mm. So here's another example. The thing, the one thing that Abraham in this whole journey had asked, had specifically asked God for. He said, I want an heir. Mm -hmm. I don't want somebody else. A servant receiving all that I have. Yes. I want an heir. And so God fulfilled the promise. And the Bible says over in Romans, the eighth chapter, that it was imputed him as righteousness. So the way that Abraham believed God, when God said, I will give you an heir, I will give you a son. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As soon as God said that, he took that to heart and said, that is mine. He was fully persuaded yes. that what God had said he would do. Mm -hmm. And as a result, his faith was counted as righteousness yeah. because he fully believed God. Yeah. So now here it is. He has received his pride and joy. And this is his son, the son that he's been waiting so long for, yeah. the son that he's <laughs> been enduring situations, the son that caused him to go out and get an Ishmael because he was so desirous of having a son. Come Come on here. <laughs> so much so that when the real son came, mm. the other son had to go. Mm. Mm. Uh-oh. We know about that. Because he said, he said in Sarah. Mm. He didn't say in Sarah's maid. Mm. He said, in Sarah, I will give you a son. 
Mm-mm-mm. Can we just take him at his word? Mm. Stop trying to manufacture stuff when God says, okay, this is for you. All right, yeah, Lord. Oh, oh, you're going to bless me? I'm going to get a car? Well, let me go out and take out as many laws as I can to get the big, the big, 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 big. We take it upon ourselves to do God's work. Here, let's look at Abraham. So the Lord said, I want your son. Mm. So what he do? He rose up the very next morning, got up early, got his son, got his servants. They go up to the mountain. And when God designated where he was supposed to go, he, he goes on to tell the servant, my son and I will go the rest of the way. Yeah. But here it is. He knows he's supposed to offer Isaac. And what does he say? He and I will return. Here's the faith (laughs) of Abraham that regardless of if he sacrificed his son, he said, no, this is the promise of God. So I know that he will resurrect him the same moment that I offer him. See, sometimes (laughs) the biggest thing for us to do We got to give up our Isaac before the Lord. That most precious thing, the thing that endears us. So let me help you. In marriage, we got to give up Isaac. Isaac. I'm trusting him with her because I'm trusting him with me. And that's what's going to polish us and make us truly not only uniform, but blessed, Come on. being able, him being able to provide for us mm-hmm. because he's working in us, in us, in us both. Mm-hmm. So I'm not just seeking him for me. I'm seeking him for us. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then that us takes on a whole nother form when it includes and encompasses our children. Then that us takes on a whole nother form when it includes and encompasses our families. Mm-hmm. Because the two shall become one. But if I'm working on becoming one with him, it's going to help me become one with her. Yes, come on. The establishment of my faith and dependent and reliance upon him is going to also loose him to be a bigger part of our relationship. Yeah, come on. That he can minister to me so that when I get off, he can put me on the right path on the straight and the narrow, so that I can see things clearly, that I have a greater level of understanding, that my mind will be quickened and sharpened to hear what's going on, not only in my heart, but in her heart. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He can speak to me expressly concerning all matters and all areas concerning me, because I'm going and I'm listening to him. Yes. Because the one thing that's going to happen He's going to work on me mm. before he starts telling me about her. That's come on. You better, you better come on here. And the, the thing is, it's so easy to get wrapped up. Well, my mate is doing this and my mate's got this going on and my mate is causing me. Oh, or not whoa. Yes. Come on. Come on. God's not going to work that way. God's going to be like, OK, I need you to get this right. I need you to get this straight. I need you to just get before me so that I can help you Mm -hmm. in your relationship. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. If you're so concentrated on your mate, you're going to miss what I'm trying to get done in you. Mm -hmm. So Abraham was willing to let go of Isaac, but he was so confident in what God said that even as he and Isaac are going up the mountain, ascending, going to the place that God has designated for him to go ahead and sacrifice him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When Isaac asked him, okay, dad, we're almost there. Where's the sacrifice? What he said, God will provide. And he said, said it again. God will provide. He will provide. We don't have to make, go, go ahead, man. We don't have to try to make stuff happen. We don't have to try to manufacture nothing. We don't have to beg. We don't have to do none of that. God will provide. The thing is, will we trust him? 
Will we trust him no matter what we see, no matter how we feel, no matter what the enemy think he's doing? Will we trust him to do what? What he said what he, he said. would do. What he he said. said, I am Jehovah Jireh. I am your provider. The thing is this, and I'm hearing this. We, and nobody's exempt, I'm speaking for myself. We don't give God the not only the opportunity, but the time to do what he said he would do. We are so used to being God or trying to play God in our lives as well as in others, especially our children. But God is saying tonight, I will provide. He says, oh, Jesus. He says, I'm shown up. Will you show up? So God says he will provide. He's already shown up. The question is, will we show up? Will we show up in our faith? Will we show up, which is in our trust? Will we show up in our surrender, will we show up with our yes, even when the test, the trials, he said, listen, he brings us through the fire, he brings us through the water, he brings us through the flood, listen, there's nothing that God won't bring us through, even Daniel, I'm hearing this, my God, even Daniel said, my God is able to deliver, even if he does not, we know that he is well able, my God, so will we trust him mm. thank you jesus go ahead so she mentioned isaiah 43 1 through 3 mm. that god said that i'll take you through the fire i'll take you through the flood why because my name is upon you Whoosh, ah. you mm. are mine he said he goes on to say there in isaiah 43 i believe it's verse 7 that he will put up other nations mm. for our ransom. Mm -hmm. How much he thinks about us, he'll put up other nations to ransom you back. And that even the very image of us is engraved upon the palms of his hands. We are his. Mm -hmm. Then also over in Isaiah, the sixth chapter in the first verse, it talks about, Isaiah's there and he says, in the year that King Uzziah died, yes. I saw the Lord. Yes. Sometimes we've got people plastered so high in our lives that it actually, and it's not their fault, but we admonish them, we admire them so much that we put them up and they become a constraint mm -hmm. for us. They mm -hmm. block truly the image of God upon us. Why? Because we're seeking after them and we're not Jesus. seeking after God. Come on here. Come on. Again, a false balance, Proverbs 11 and 1, a false balance is, the, is an abomination before the Lord. Mm -hmm. So are we turning people into abominable things because we are so set on either being like them, emulating them, following them, hearkening unto them, now I'm I'm trying not to put a constraint on you to be like, oh, I can't follow after man. No, there's strength and there's power that comes through hearing the word of God and from different sources. And you know who you trust or who moves your spirit when that word comes. Mm -hmm. But don't be so on them mm -hmm. that they obstruct the presence, the power, and the ability of God in you. Mm -hmm because you're following so hard after them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. People will have their place, yes. but their place is not before God. Mm -hmm. So he had lifted up King Uzziah so that when he died, guess what? There was nothing to restrict him. There was nothing to block him anymore. There was nothing to run that interference. It was easy to solemnly give his yes. And he went on to see the Lord. because he had put that man up before him. Mm. And the thing is, it's not, it wasn't the king's fault. He just admired him. He admonished him greatly. Mm. So we've got to watch what pedestal we put people on 
so that that pedestal doesn't become a stumbling block for us. So that when God starts to try and deal with us, when God is revealing himself, when God is speaking to us, yes. come on, come on. it's not blocked. It's not denied. Yes. It's not stopped. We haven't handcuffed God because we're so into someone or we've got our own Isaac mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that God's like, okay, let me help you get things into proper perspective. Mm -hmm. Give me. Mm -hmm. Come on. Is it your finances? Are you so tied into money, trying to make money, trying to increase your income mm -hmm. that you've put that before the Lord mm -hmm. so that when God says, give me, mm -hmm. you're, you, you, you turn before the Lord and like you become Gideon. Uh, Lord, I don't really know if that's for you. Can you prove that word? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You want me to give a special offering? Uh, how much? Lord, you, you sure you want me to do that? Is that really for me? <laughs> Gotta let Isaac go. Mm. Gotta let Isaac go, because in the minute we do that, do we we don't understand how many doors open up mm -hmm. when we just go with what God is telling us to do. Because we find out just in Genesis, the third chapter, 13th chapter, excuse me, one chapter from where Abram began. Mm -hmm. One chapter later, he is very rich. Mm -hmm. Not only is he very rich, just the riches that are shared between he and Lot are so great that the land could not keep them. The city that they were in, it was overflowing beyond the borders of the city that they had gotten to. My God. My God. Thank you, Jesus. He was overflowing. Mm -hmm. Why? Because he just went on and did what God was telling him to do. He went on to follow and to know the Lord. That the Lord could start dealing with him. And then when the men between Lot and himself, his men, start having fallouts, he's like, okay, we got to separate. I'd rather have a separate than for us to be at each other because our men can't get along because our stuff is getting mixed up. They had so much stuff. They, they couldn't even border and barrier everything that they had, even from each other. Cattle getting mixed up with other cattle, sheep getting mixed up with other sheep, goats getting mixed. All their stuff was becoming intertwined. And the men that were working for both of them were like, hey, that's my master stuff. No, that's my master stuff. And so they're fighting, they're bickering, they're arguing. And Abram's just like, you know what? I'd rather see us separate than to see us fight. <laughs> How about the season was up? How about that? And sometimes when we don't, listen, listen, God had to teach me this. And sometimes when we don't recognize or, uh-oh, wait a minute, we may recognize, but we just don't want to let, let go. go. And when God is saying the season is over and that doesn't mean that anything has to be wrong or right. something's wrong with that person or vice versa or anything like that, you know, we need, we're not going to go there tonight. But listen, God is saying the season is over. And sometimes when we don't let go and when we don't, like I said, we, they had to, they had to go their separate ways. And when we don't do that, it, it brings discord. It brings division. It brings all kind of chaos and mess. And then the relationship is bad. It is bad. Somebody's bitter. Somebody's offended. Somebody, you know, is full of resentment because why? We simply did not listen and move on, disconnect, whatever you want to call it, when God was saying the season is over. It's time to move on. Listen, move on. Earlier, when we were talking, I was hearing the Lord say, I was trying to wait for a name to get down. He, God said, my name is on the line. So when we do it his way, when we, sh listen, he says, I've already shown up. When we show up with our yes, he said, my name is on the line, not yours, but my name. So what is he saying to us? He says, I'm faithful to my word. Whatever I spoke, I'm faithful to do it. My name, God says, my name is on the line, not your name, but my name. And he says, and I will show up. So listen, go ahead, baby. 
Well, just going to go right to that same point. Isaiah 43, 1. But now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not. Don't let fear grip you. Fear not. Jesus. For I have called, I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by your name. Jesus. Thou art mine. So he's getting personal with it. Not just that he called you, but he specifically called you out. He focused his attention and his efforts on you. Yes. Why? You are that precious in yes. his eyesight. You are that important to him. He needs you to know yes. Yes. that Come you on. are kept and sustained by him. Let's look at verse two. When thou yes. passest through the water and when thou, I will be with thee and through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shall not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle mm -hmm. upon thee. You won't be singed. See, but this is what happens when we go in his name. In his name, provision, covering, protection, power. Because any fireman, when they go through training or when they go into a burning building, mm -hmm. they will tell you it's actually not the fire that's the most dangerous thing. Mm -hmm. It's the smoke. Mm -hmm. You get enough of that smoke in you, it'll do more damage than the fire itself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it takes God's power, God's might. Ask those same four Hebrew boys that she was talking about just a little while ago, Shadrach, Meshach. And that one bad Negro, when they were going through the fire, when they were being put into the flame, they said, look, we know our God is able to deliver us. If he does, praise God. If he doesn't, praise God. We still will not bow, Nebuchadnezzar. They put themselves out there and they said, this is it. This is it. For God, we will live. For God, we will die. Plain and simple. You can threaten us. We watch the men burn. Doesn't move us. We see you amp up the heat in that furnace. It doesn't move us. God is still God. God is still who we recognize. God is still who we're dependent upon, who we're trusting and relying in. Do what you want. We'll still stand and trust and lean mm -hmm. on God. And really, isn't it about time that we just listened? Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. he's constantly speaking. Mm -hmm. Have we surrendered? Have we let go of Isaac? Have we let go of our Uzziah? Mm -hmm. Have we put away our lot? Mm -hmm. Well, just because they're family, they got to stay close. Who said? Mm -hmm. The Bible even says that our greatest hurt will come from those that are closest to us. So are we holding on to somebody who's actually damaging us, mm -hmm. who's hurting us, who's hindering us? Because we have a history, we have a past, so we mm -hmm. think hey, they, they always have to be in my life. No, they don't. The more we take before the Lord, the more we give him the right and the authority to speak over our lives in, in all aspects, in all areas, mm -hmm. the more he covers us, the more he keeps us, the more he provides for us, the more he ensures us, the more he's at work in us. But we have to set our will, our yes, on him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If I'm giving him a yes, then he's going to show up. Mm -hmm. If I'm giving him a yes, he's going to provide. If I'm giving him a yes, he's going to keep me in perfect peace. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. So let's make up our minds tonight. 
I'm going to heal with him and I'm going to go with him. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be right there in that place that he has designated for me. So that truly he will be in operation in my life. Mm -hmm. I won't have to try and generate and make things happen for myself. I'm operating under that covering. Mm -hmm. I'm empowered by him. I'm kept by him. I'm sustained by him. He makes all things new mm -hmm. concerning me. Yes. yes. Not only am I a new creature, but he's made every situation for me new because I put it in his hands. It's not me trying to make mold or create my own thing, but I'm trusting him. So when he says go, it's immediate. I got to go. I got to put it down. Mm -hmm. I have to allow him to be at work mm -hmm. so that I can rest. Because mm -hmm. in my own ability, in my own might, I fail. And the other thing is, in my own ability, in my own might, I'm limited. Mm -hmm. But through Christ, all things are possible. Yes. All things are possible. Yes. And, you know, I just um, feel led to share something um, with everyone, just a moment of transparency. And just even with giving our yes, you know, and not taking it back. And Lord says, you share, you share. So I'm going to share what um, what he wants me to share concerning this. I remember I gave God my yes and I continue to give God my yes. It's not just a one time. I continue. We're saying yes. Anytime you say, for example, when temptation comes and you choose not to go with that, you giving God your yes. Anytime when things, circumstances, situations come about and you're saying, God, no, I'm not going to, I choose to trust you no matter what, how this feels or no matter what, you're continuing to give God your yes. Even, you know, so let, let me share this. I remember after the Lord restored me, this is before Naaman and I had got married. And I remember the Lord restored me. I was in my singleness. Uh, I had got divorced. Um, I was divorced and I was allowing God to heal and to deliver me and just you know, get me together. How about that? <laughs> and so in that process, and this is why it's so important that we don't put confidence in our flesh. Mm -hmm. We don't have enough time to talk about it tonight, but listen, I don't mind telling people because if it's going, whatever God purposes to do, it'll do. If it's going to help to bring healing and deliverance, then amen. But listen, so I'm going to have to, you know, just kind of give a quick sip. So after God restored me and, you know, getting out of this mess that I got, that I got myself into. Hello, somebody I, listening to all to my flesh. I got myself. So when God restored me and I gave God my yes, from the moment I gave him my yes, after he restored me, I've never looked back. I, I continue as I've been walking this thing out. I've been continuing to give God my yes. When he comes, he pulls back these layers because it's like, I, I like to say, we like onions. We're like onions. We have many layers as he continues to heal, as he continues to deliver, as he continues to, as I'm laying on the, um, on the altar and he's dealing with, I continue to give him my yes. Even when we were in a situation where we didn't really have anything, food, money. I continue to give God my yes. I continue to cry out to God and ask God to show me, to show me where to go, how to get the food, where to, you know, these different things when we were in a, a, a situation, financial situation, when we were, um, we didn't have hardly any food, God was shown because I continue to give him my yes. It would have been easy to go another way because I knew how to get it. Hello, somebody. But I said, no, 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 no. I don't want an Ishmael. I want, listen, I got an Isaac and I have to continue to give God my yes. So I can't go back. I can't go back. I can't give it back. I'm not giving it back my yes. So I'm going to go through this thing. God's going to be faithful to bring me out of this thing because he said he's faithful to his word. So as I'm continuing to in my wall, I'm continuing to give God my yes. As I submit myself and surrender myself to his word, as I'm renewing my mind to the word of God, I'm saying, yes, God, as I'm continuing to walk in holiness, sanctification, consecration, I'm telling 
saying, God, yes, this is my yes. This is what your yes looks like because God, I choose not to go into adultery. I choose not to allow my mind to be tainted and over here with somebody else or with doing other things. Hello, somebody. I know we're talking to somebody tonight, but God, I continue to stay committed to you. I continue to say yes to you. I continue to say yes to him. I'm giving you my yes, God, because it is easy. It is easy to get to take it back. It is easy to go with the temptation. It is easy to go the other way. Abram, he could have, listen, he said, no, no, I'm taking him up. He could have, it was easy for him to turn around and get a sacrifice, but he gave God his yes and he continued to press forward. So listen, this is what God is saying. As we continue to surrender, as we continue to choose those things which are of him, we're giving him our yes. And he says, I'm faithful. I'm faithful. So the things that we are walking into now is because of not because of any goodness of us, because God is faithful to his word and we continue to give him our yes. When he says, Rashida, do you love me? If you love me, obey me. Yes, God. I love you. My yes is not me just opening up my mouth saying yes. My yes is in my actions. My yes is in my behavior. My yes is in my lifestyle. My yes is in my consecration before the Lord. My yes is in my fasting. My yes is in my praise. My yes is in my worship. My yes is in my prayer. My yes is in my, oh Jesus, oh God. I love you, Jesus. My yes is in my saying no to the world. My yes is in my no, saying no to the enemy when he comes with the temptations. My yes, I'm not taking my yes back. And because of that, God is faithful. He is faithful. So things that you see now, and I want to say this because God is saying to say this. When we give God our yes and don't take it back, when we are faithful to him as he's faithful to us, we are sought out. We don't have to be anxious about nothing. We don't have to try to make up nothing. As we said earlier, we don't have to try to manufacture anything. But God is putting our names in the ears of others. God is putting our names on the mouth, on the lips of others. God is making us sought out. The word of God talks about being sought out and we don't have to try to do things or make things happen. No, no, no. God says, I got you. He says, I've already formed. I've already ordained. I've already purposed. I knew this day before you were formed in your mother's womb. He says, I have have purpose. I have set aside this day, this very moment. And it's not just for you. It's not just for you, but it's for so many others. It's for the greater purpose. It's for the bigger picture. Hello, somebody. Your yes is not even for you. Your yes is for another soul. Your yes my God, it's for the generational blessings for your family. Your yes is for the breaking of the generational curses in your family. Your yes is for the generational wealth. Your yes, my God, Jesus, I feel you today. Your yes is for, my God, come on, babe, come on. Your yes, your yes, come on, come on, come on. And I was just hearing this. Uh, this passage, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. As hard and as difficult as it seems naturally, mm. I'm a trust him. Mm -hmm. I'm not putting my dependency on my own strength. My own strength has limits. And the other thing is, the more I try to do things on my own, the more I limit and I constrain God. I constrict him when I determine that my yes is my yes is partial. Mm. And I'm gonna do 
okay, I know you got me out here, Lord, but I'm I'm gonna take over from here. Mm -hmm. I prevent him from doing again what we say when he when we obey his command when we yes mm -hmm. to what he says. There's power. Mm -hmm. There's purpose, and there's provision. Mm -hmm. So we start cutting out the power, the purpose, and the provision when we determine to do things our own way. Again, it's not by might. Mm -hmm. It's not by power. Mm -hmm. It's by his spirit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what's my job? My job is to agree. When I'm in agreement, things start lining up. When I'm in agreement, there's capability. Amos 3. How can two walk together except they be agreed? Mm. So when he's speaking, how can I say that I walk with him? Remember, anything that's born of the flesh, you'll see fleshly actions that line up with it. Anything that's born of the spirit, you will see spiritual actions that line up with it. That's how you can judge if something's from God. Does it line up with the word of God? Does it line up with the spirit of God? Does it line up with what you have heard, what you've been taught? That's how you know you're operating in the spirit. God's, what, what do we know? He's the same today, yesterday, and forever. My God. Things will line up. God is what? Always true to his word. Always true. Why? Because he and the word are one. John 1.1. 1, 1. In the beginning was the word. In the beginning, God used the word. What is he trying to get established in us? The word. And I know I'm saying it a bit awkwardly, but I'm trying to get it to stand out. We've got to trust. We've got to let go, allow him, and we've got to trust. You know, that is so true, Naaman. Um before we um, before we get ready in, I just want to share this with you because it's just on me to share. And normally I don't. <laughs> it's like one of the move in silence type of, you know. There's just something that God had told me to do, and in doing it, surrendering and giving Him my yes. This is I'm talking about what I'm in now. And giving him my yes. Let me tell you something. I'm what? Four? Is this the fifth day or so that I'm in this thing, right? I think this is the fifth day. Let me get my journal here. Yes, this is the fifth day that I'm in this thing. And let me tell you something. <laughs> when you give God your yes, don't take it back. And I'm telling you, he is faithful. He shows up every time. And when the enemy knows when you're serious. The enemy knows when your mind is made up. He knows when you have given God a real yes. You know, I'm five days in this thing. So many things have tried to take place. But the, the, the flip side of that is, because God is God's calling, what he has called me to do. And he has been showing his hand so strong in this thing. So the enemy, because I already got the victory, because the enemy has been seeing how, you know, God, the enemy sees, he, he's not ignorant. He knows, he sees what God is doing in our lives, okay? To the point where He's bringing others who don't even know us, who don't know anything about what is going on, what God has is doing in our lives to say, listen, this, you right there, you right there, you're, you're right there. This thing is about to manifest in the natural. Listen, so what does he do? He's trying to take every, shoot every blow that he got. Listen. I got some news today. Let me tell you something. And I'm just like, what the what? Did she say that? Yes, she did. I said, what? It it will it, it kind of and I said, and you know what? I just said, 
I'm like, who, me? Say what? It, oh, is this what we doing now? And I just begin to laugh in his face. Because I said, uh-oh, my husband said, uh-oh, what happens when a thief has been caught? He got to repay seven times. So you know what? This thing here, what you think you're doing, I just laughed in your face because I see, I recognize what this thing is. And I'm going to continue to give God my yes. I'm not going to turn back no matter what accusation, no matter what you try to bring. I'm going to continue to say yes to God because I understand that you're trying to pull out everything you got. You couldn't get me over here. So now you're like, okay, let me get over here. Huh? Where the heart is, where the heart is, huh? Huh? And it, it's, it, when this whole thing is over, well, we're going to talk about it. We're going to give God the glory on this thing. Come on. Because this thing is already over because he's trying to pull out anything he can because we didn't already broke through. How about that? How about that? So you know what? So I just laughed. Normally, I would be like going off, but I just laughed in the face of the enemy. And I said, do what you got to do. Do what you got to do because it's already settled. It's already settled because daddy said it. And I'm going to continue to give him my yes. I will not be moved by nothing that you have coming. I will not be moved because my mind is made up. God is faithful and he's showing up. So thank you all so much for joining us on tonight. <laughs> thank you for my pop-up guest on tonight. <laughs> thank you so much, Naaman. Also, I'm just we're just going to do a little quick announcement. Um, Naaman, if you don't mind just letting the people know, uh, about your book. If you want to share a little bit about your book, um, I'm going to show a video of the book and then he is more than welcome to just give a little bit um, about it uh, before we end. We're here every Friday at 6 p.m. Um, join us next Friday. Listen, we have some beautiful ladies uh, that will be with us for the month of June. We are super excited. We have Dr. Rita Wallace Posey. She's going to be with us on Friday, June the 4th here on um Daughters Talk on Elevation TV Network. Then we have uh, the woman of God, Chantel Moore. Then we have Dr. Sue. And listen, just come on in 10 p.m. Let your friends, let your family know we are here on Elevation TV Network every Friday at 10 p.m. I'm going to go ahead and play the video before we end. We love you all. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you for those of you that are watching even on demand. Thank you so, so much. All right, so let me go ahead and play. Amen. 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 Thank you all so much for joining us. Um, we're just sitting up here. We're just trying to um, just discern. Sorry, y'all. We're trying to discern uh, whether or not we're going to take this on over to Clubhouse and just allow the Lord just to continue to have his way and just to minister. Um, uh, I am on Clubhouse under Rashida Haig. And then also we are on Clubhouse together, naming uh, and Rashida under our business. Um, so we're just going to um, pray and see how God leads us. And we'll probably be on Clubhouse and just. We're going over to Clubhouse. Okay. We're going to be there. All right. So we love you all. Thank you so much for tuning in tonight. If you can follow us on Clubhouse, if you need an invite, please message me on Messenger and I will send you an invite. It's for Android and Apple now. So we love you all and blessings.